Hey data fans, Reed here. So today I'm excited to show you uh, an upgrade that I ended up creating for the native waterfall visual. Um, and I'll talk about a couple of things that I was actually able to do that I wanted to do and some uh, accidental successes that I stumbled upon. So in front of us here is the native waterfall visual. Now this visual only does horizontal. So what I'll show you in this video is actually how to create a vertical one. And then I realized that the vertical one will once we walk through this, you'll see a few extra features that we have, such as the ability to get a zoom slider to focus in on the values. But then I realized that I can do that as well in a horizontal visual format. So even this, with the ability to zoom in, do some additional formatting, all of that honestly gives me more features than this native waterfall visual does. And I'm only using native visuals and visual calcs. So, I want to walk you through kind of how to create all of this. Again, just using a native stack chart in Power BI plus a few visual calculations. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI and get started. So we have in front of us here the visual that I built out. Again, my goal for this to start with was just I really wished we had a vertical waterfall chart that we couldn't build with this native one. There's no option to pivot this. So this is what I ended up building. And I'll talk about the extra features as part of the visual itself. But essentially, all I'm using is a stacked bar chart. And I have a couple of things in here. Specifically, I have something in here just with a period. Technically, this is a visual calc with a running total in it. But I have a decrease, an increase, and a start and end balance. Now, the reason I have all three of these is so I could color them independently for that. There's no actual conditional formatting button when you have a stacked uh, bar chart for this case. So end result looks like this. A couple of nice extra features that come with this is that I can actually turn on a total label if I wanted to. And I have that zoom slider so I can actually zoom in, which the native waterfall chart doesn't have. But let's walk through these visualizations and all of the visual calcs that I used. So before I show you the breakdown of this, let's walk through logically what we have in front of us and how the values need to move left and right. So the starting balance will always just be, in this case, the original amount. Now I have a table with an actual starting balance and all of this in my demo data. So that's what I actually have across my categories. So these are already created. So I'm starting simple just to show you the visual perspective of this, but I actually have defined end and starting balances. So from a visual perspective, the bar for starting balance is just going to be the amount. That is what we start with. And for sales increase, in this case, there is an actual value that needs to go up. So for the waterfall, it needs to start at my starting balance and move to the right and increase by a certain set amount. And if we get a decrease, it starts from the end of the previous row and moves backwards. Now, the thing with this is uh, due to the chart type, if I actually had an actual negative number here, it would be past the zero point. So technically, this is a positive number with some custom formatting. So I have the dynamic data label sitting on the top here, but this is actually the absolute amount of this. But the bar here that's hidden, this is a stacked bar, that's basically just the running total minus whatever the decreased amount is. So that's how it's able to show it looks like it's moving to the left, which it is. But again, it's technically a positive value in this bar, but it's creating that waterfall effect. So it moves to the right when it's increasing, left when it decreases, again, starts from that point, moves back and forth. So it creates the exact effect that we need to. And then the ending balance will just be the original value. So this helps give some context of what we need to build in here using visual calcs. So coming to this. Let's go ahead and edit the visual calcs. And if you haven't used them before, clicking the Add Data button, turning it on here, if you have these turned on in preview, is how you add a new visual calculation. So I'm going to click Edit on the previous amount. Now, what this is going to do is it will provide nothing on the starting balance, and then it grabs the previous amount. Because each section that I have here, my sales increase, that base bar that I'm going to be hiding on the stacked amount needs to take previous balance plus whatever that current one is, because that's the invisible base that is over here. So again, I'll just show you as an example, I'm going to come to bars, I'm going to go to this base amount, let's take the transparency off temporarily. There are actual bars sitting in here to stack these together. So that's that effect that I'm doing. 
So this is helping us to understand how I essentially built this and walked through the vertical. So with that being said, I started with a previous balance, but now I need to do running total that. So I'm going to come into here. I'm going to hide my previous amount. Now I'm going to show my running total amount. And let's go ahead and stack them now. So it's somewhat working. So we do have my base amount. There's that here. And for the first section, it works. My base amount here plus that has that connection that would increase if I hid that. But now here's the problem with my negative. So my amount is actually now showing in the negative section here. So it wouldn't be showing here because of that. So I need an absolute value to go here and then for this amount to stack accordingly with that. So that's something that we're going to address now as well. So I'm going to actually hide my original amount and I'm going to add my decrease and increase and make sure that my increase is actually the showing. Here we go, green, give that a 20%. There we go. So that's how they're basically now connecting with each other here, but let's just look at the running total. So I'm going to go to edit and we're going to look at the formula down here for the running total. So for my running total amount, I do not need it to show for my starter imbalance. So I zero those out and then I did a calculation for this. So if the amount is less than zero for any section in here, meaning if there's a negative, it takes the running sum and it subtracts the actual um, absolute value in this case for my amount decrease. So it removes that. So in, as it goes up here, it takes what the running amount would be and subtracts this essentially to get that correct piece to have room for my decreased amount. Otherwise, it returns the normal running sum. So it's accounting for whether or not it's an increase or decrease. And then my decrease, similarly in here, I have an if statement. So if it's less than zero and the category is not starting or ending balance, it will return the absolute amount. So that's how I'm able to get this, technically this positive amount showing here, even though the data label is negative that we'll discuss in a second. So that is how I'm doing my increase and my decrease which gives me that nice effect where it just positions it appropriately to get all of these. And then I could do something like come to this, hide this, making sure my border is turned off. And the last thing I can do is turn on my start imbalance, give that a different color. Let's go ahead and give this, there we are. So that's how all of those are being connected. And my start imbalance is really just if the category is either starting or ending, return the original amount. And I wanted to have this separately because this gives me those different colors that I can apply to each one of these sections as we go through this. Now, the data label part is the, one of the final little touches in here. So that is coming through under the data labels where for any of these sections, I have brought in, uh, let's not the running total, it's going to be yet decrease. So if I go to value, I'm using dynamic data labeling. Now, I found that there's at least a little bit of a limitation. If I put in the original, amount value, which should have positives and negatives, at least with the preview feature of, of calculation groups today, if I try to add this here, we don't actually get the currency symbol, unfortunately. So amount is showing in here, but we get negative 60, not with a dollar symbol. So given that I had a second measure pointing to the first one with format of currency. So they're technically identical, but this one would at least give me the currency amounts, which I was preferring and more of the uh, currency type formatting of the rounded brackets on the outside to represent that. So that's about the only big difference that I did between those two. And similarly with this, I can go to the data label for my increase, ensure that those are um, added into there. But in result of all of this is we get the nice design um, in here, which will give us those unique colors across all of it. And again, I'm just surprised that we haven't had this yet, but I do know Miguel and team is going to be updating this soon. Or we will get a, be getting a much better vertical uh, waterfall uh, visualization and a hor horizontal waterfall visualization in Power BI eventually. But due to those limitations that I talked about and the fact that we can't pivot this and there's a few missing features, I actually found that this vertical waterfall works fairly well in the horizontal format where we get a few extra features such as the start and end. The native one doesn't let me separately color the start. There is no extra options for formatting in here. If I come to this and I go to columns, I only have specific colors for this with a total. So I get more flexibility around that. I get the border and transparency options in my columns as well with some of these, which is really nice. And finally, again, 
I really like having the zoom option, which I think works very well. So between both of those, I think this is a great solution for that. I'm sure there's probably a way to break it potentially depending on how you're filtering around. And obviously if you change the sorting, that's gonna break stuff. This is sorted specifically by category in my case, but it still acknowledges slicer selections as the data moves around and it works pretty well. So overall, end of the day, I was quite happy with this solution. I think it works very well and it looks nice and elegant and it represents the data exactly as I wanted to see it. And pretty much only requiring one additional model measure for the labels, otherwise everything else was done as a visual calc. So I'd be curious and love to know your thoughts. Drop those into the comment section down below. Check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. It will help my channel grow. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.